Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Andrews of Search Minerals. How are you today? I'm great, Tracy. Thank you. We're in the last day of PDAC and we're trying to attract cannabis investors who've made more money than they know what to do with to diversify and go into some things like rare earths. Yes. Well, rare earths are obviously the vitamins of technology and uh, especially for the millennials, they, they're a big consumer of all these uh, electronics and the new cars and electrification of vehicles and that's what's really driving our rare earth space right now. The vitamins of technology, I gotta, I, I gotta love that. And of course, we've had a lot of interest in our site recently, trending number one, interest in rare earths. Is the market about to turn around and explode like it did 2010? Well, we, we believe it is. The electrification is what's really driving it, both from vehicles and wind turbines. And back to what you're talking about, that spike in 2009 and 10, there wasn't any big push behind it other than, oh, maybe we'll buy more cell phones. But with electrification, that's going to really put a uh, constraint on the supply that's out there right now. And that's what Search is trying to fill that void when the time comes in the next few years. And for our new audience, we're trying to attract a rare earth. Just want to mention that currently China controls almost 90% of all produced rare earths in the world. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, so, you know, we've started off in uh, 2009, the rest of world problem. And having a, a you know, safe jurisdiction in Newfoundland Labrador is very key as a safe jurisdiction to produce that uh, product for the other markets other than China. And of course, other elements that contribute to stock activity or issues of sustainability and geopolitical issues. Can you tell us how rare earths play into that game? Yeah, so we look at China being an end consumer of their own electric vehicles. They're driving the force in that that space and so they're going to consume their own uh, raw materials first and so there may not be products for the rest of the world also and they're also looking to be maybe net importers of our rare earths so they're out there looking outside the world also to ensure they have a supply for their growing needs also. And there are very few projects actually in North America, is that correct? There's projects, but uh, one, one thing that puts search above uh, some of the other projects is we have a technology that allows us to be a low cost. So for a thousand tons per day uh, production, that's 152 million, which we've always worked to make sure that that's a financeable number. You know, it's always going to be tough. We don't want to, our product is scalable, so we can start at 1,000 tons per day, go to 2,000, and grow up instead of having to spend a large capital and have a large capital base that needs to uh, be paid for with a large production rate. So, Greg, would you mind giving us a kind of a 10 story overview about the search projects? So Deep Fox, which we just announced those results last week, which we do, when we do our exploration, we do a detailed channel sample program. So that means what we see on top, we want to prove down below. So the difference between Foxtrot and Deep Fox is Foxtrot was 400 meters by 10, and Deep Fox is 400 meters by 30 meters. So conceptually, that could be up to three times the size of Foxtrot. So that drilling needed to prove that that 30 meters extended down below, which it has down to the 200 meter level. So what that does for a game changer is take us from a Foxtrot 14 year life mine to possibly 25, 30 plus generational type play. And that's really excited the local communities and the both federal and provincial government. Search Minerals has got everything lined up right now. What should we anticipate as shareholders in this upcoming quarter or two, Greg? Well, the, the, our next piece of work, with it's all about the Deep Fox right now. We're going to get a resource estimate on that. We're going to update that, uh, update our PEA from there. And what our PEA is going to do is take both Deep Fox and Foxtrot because they're in close proximity. They're 13 kilometers apart from each other. And that PEA should show those economics that, that we're looking for and the long-term extension life of the project. From that, we will go through it, the in, initiate the in, uh, environmental stage for Deep Fox so that we have both Foxtrot and Deep Fox both going through the environmental process to get the permitting done in about two years. So we have technology, we have clean tech, and we have rare earths with search minerals. Thank you so much for joining us today, Greg. Thank you, Tracy.